if you get a chance to try this lizard crawl right here. You may notice it is a rather taxing maneuver in that it combines a unique way of moving with a modified push-up. But for that, it is uniquely challenging, and that alone can sometimes make it worth doing. Right away you'll notice that a lot of the effort is in just attempting to hold the body up. The trunk wants to collapse to the ground, but the arms and legs can't allow it. Adding to this difficulty, throughout almost all parts of the movement, the arms are wide and at least slightly bent. For comparison, a traditional push-up position would be easier because it takes advantage of how the bony surfaces of the arms support themselves, stacked perpendicular on each other, so that there is a rest point when the arms are straight. The bent arm, though, has to use constant contraction, contraction of the forearm flexors to maintain wrist position, pushing into the ground. The triceps will extend the elbow to lift the arm up and stabilize the scapula. Conversely, you could also say that in the downward or lowering component, the triceps effectively slow the fall. And as a blanket statement, most muscles mentioned will be doing a very similar thing on the down motion, slowing the fall. In addition to this, the wide position of the arms make them want to slide outward because of the weight of the trunk above them. And so to prevent that, we need the contraction of the biceps and pecs to pull inward on the arms. Just above this, it gets really interesting when we talk about the link between the arms and the ribcage. The only bony or joint connection from arm or upper girdle to the thorax is the clavicle. And the clavicle is not a significant enough weight-bearing structure to hold the weight of the ribcage, neck, and head. You may have seen the scapula on the back, but that's what's called a pseudo-joint because it just floats on the ribcage connected only by muscle. In a way, the rib cage, and therefore the neck and head along with it, is suspended or hanging from the scapula in this position via the serratus anterior muscle, as well as the pec minor and the pec major, which is just really cool. Now the legs are doing a different thing entirely. For starters, there's a stronger bony connection through the leg to the pelvis. This straightened back leg looks like it's not supporting anything, but it is a bit. Both the anterior tibial muscles, the dorsiflexors, and the calf muscles, the plantar flexors, keep the foot in position. The quads will keep the knee straight, and of those quads, the rectus femoris, along with the psoas and iliacus, the hip flexors as a whole, push the entire leg into the ground to prop up the body just a little. The bent leg comes up and to the outside, very close to the same sided arm. Being bent, it has much more capacity for generating force, and is therefore more contributing to stability. The bent leg is able to push up by doing plantar flexion at the ankle, pushing the foot into the ground, that's by the gastrox and soleus, extension of the knee, which is again by the quads, and a little on the gas and soleus as well to pull the tibia backwards because the foot can't go through the ground, obviously. And some hip extension, which is mainly through the gluteus maximus muscle. Also, because the leg is so far out, we get some adductor muscle contraction, adduction of the hip joint, which is an inward pull from femur towards the pelvis. Because of this contrast in leg position and arm position, there is a ton of rotation in the spine under some pretty significant muscular contraction right when we get to here. You could call this the upper and lower girdles opposing each other, like you're wringing out the spine. Don't take that too literally, of course. Like mentioned previously in the regression video for this movement, this kind of bending or rotation motion is perfectly safe and well received by the fascial system as long as that fascial system is strong and well conditioned. Which is another reason you might want to learn to do some cool moves like this. As always, thanks to Phase 6 for the inspiration. Keep moving everyone.